think sometimes it's fair to ask the question when you're in love with somebody, when you're close to somebody, what's more important, to be close or to be intimate? Well, we know if everything's working properly that both have their place. But at the end of the day, if you can't be close to somebody, then intimacy is no different to really anything else. It's just a momentary phase that you go through when you're needing something like food. It's easy to get into a relationship when, um, when you need something. But what about when everything's all your needs are met? What about when you've caught up to yourself? I believe this is part of the problem in modern relationships today. People are meeting people and they have a hunger. They have a thirst. That thirst is being met through intimate actions, intimate interactions but to the negligence of connectedness and closeness. I don't talk about narcissism very much, but one thing I do know about it is when you're in a relationship with a narcissist or you are a narcissist, they'll tell you themselves. They have a predictable pattern of deterioration within a relationship doesn't mean they're not loving doesn't mean they're not trying but the love bombing is always preceded by nothing distance withdrawal absence emptiness vacancy gone, where are you, hello, ground control to Major Tom type stuff. That's the problem with not being able to identify somebody who has a history of deteriorating on a relationship after it's established. It's a major problem because it leaves a genuine person <clears throat> who's learnt how to build, learnt how to construct, learnt how to maintain, learnt how to maintain, sustain and be healthy in what's supposed to be a properly functioning relationship. Look at these ducks. There's some good footage of a family working together. Right there. And so, and so. We have the constant damage that is done by people who just give in. They've caught up with themselves. They've had their food. They've had their feed. They don't need you anymore. They don't want you anymore. At that time, until it's convenient to turn up again, then they'll come back. For another dose and then you get left wondering what happened this time you put in your best efforts you try and get close but it's just not going to happen it's just not possible it's a fleeting moment they come like a storm and they're gone like a storm 
I really don't know how it works. I've never been able to work out how that works. It's not workable. It's just not workable. I don't know how it works. It's not how it's meant to be. It's not how it's supposed to be. And it causes damage. It causes severe dam terrible damage to people. Horrible damage. Because somebody's trying to love somebody that's not going to play a role in which that is able. They disable the person that wants to love. They disable that person. They completely disable that person. That's what they do. That's what happens. And there's really no way of protecting yourself from that. How do you protect yourself from that? Is it possible? Can you, can you protect yourself from that? Can you predict things? Can you not miss the red flags? Can you pull away quick enough from somebody like that before you get too badly hurt? Can you navigate an escape plan once your heart's connected to somebody like that? Because they don't care, they're just following their lust. They're just following a lust that deceives. A lust that is unquenchable. And I've said this before, they're like vampires. They draw on you, you put back in, you give, you put in, and then they take. But then they go. It's like a vampire coming out at night, only comes out at night and disappears in the day. That's what it's like. That's what this type of person is like. And it's not, not good because you're, you're trying to build something. So you're trying to have something that's important to you. And they've made out it's important to them. But now all of a sudden, why is it not so important? Because they weren't able to sustain it. They weren't able to maintain it. They didn't want to. They got their fill. That was it. And you have to appreciate things for what they are. Which is easier said than done, isn't it? When you've given your heart to somebody and all of a sudden that person's changed their mind or something's changed. They're no longer interested or that kind of thing. And you're trying to work out how you unravel yourself from this chaos because when you see one of the great things let me put it to you this way with cult organizations is you've committed your you've committed your devotion and your faith and your loyalty and all that to the cult you've committed yourself to the cult Your heart is connected to the cult. Now, how do you unravel somebody from that cult? You've got to undo their beliefs. You've got to untie their beliefs. You've got to change their beliefs. How do you do that? One step at a time. And it could take years. It could take years and years. In fact, as a matter of fact, not all cult people fully recover. They just don't fully recover. It's not possible. They've given too much of themselves to the, um, to the organization and they can't find their way back out. You've got betrayal, you've got guilt, you've got shame, you've got 
all those things that come with being deceived. Some people never fully recover. They just never fully recover. The damage is too deep. The ties are too strong. And particularly when it's got to do with God. Now, take the God part and tra transfer that into what's supposed to be a loving relationship, which is what we're supposed to do and be is, you know, um, supposed to be committed and loving. Negotiative. When people want to be your enemy and you're trying to be a part of a loving family and it's not happening, you've been attached, you've become attached and that attachment's not working, how do you back out? Well, the first thing you'll realise is something's wrong. And of course, we put the red flag back in the drawer because we don't want to give in or let ourselves down. Then, red flag after red flag and you start to get concerned because you start to tire. Your conscience will keep working even if you deny it conscience works. That's what changes people in prisons. If there's a possibility of them changing, it will come by their conscience. And some people become criminals because they follow their conscience and their um, values so deeply that they harm people because they're not following what they believe everyone should follow. And so they harm people and maim people and that's what you get for not following what I believe. That's what you get. So having beliefs and morals and integrity and all that's good, but they've got to be built on the right structures and they've got to also be very carefully followed. Because when we start forcing our beliefs on someone else, we can be we can use morals and integrity as a way of um, um, bloody against people. A lot of young people do this. A lot of a lot of young people fall for this. So there's a there's a there's a balance. But once you're enmeshed with somebody, once you're um, involved with somebody and they start to fail then what do you do? How do you back out of there? How do you get out of that? If they're starting to deteriorate if they're one of these types that just can't make it they start to withdraw they're not wanting to see you as much anymore you're still trying the best you can They've just had a change of heart. Well, as I said, you've got to not... When you get enough red flags, you'll, you'll give in in the end. You just will. You won't be able not to. You'll tire out. Your conscience will beat you. It always does. It's just how it works. This is Dr. Jason... W. Morrison, Theologist. I just want to say before I go, one of the hardest things you can learn how to do is to let somebody go. You go through the grief, the pain, the uncomfortableness, the sleepless nights, the nervous system at 90%, firing on 90%. All this stuff. But you've got to find a way to get through it. Hobbies, look at my car. 
There you go, viewers. I've got hobbies. Hide the filing stuff, push bike, all that. I walk along here and exercise along here. You've got to have hobbies to find your way through. That's all there is to it. Cycling. You just can't sit there and think that that's going to fix anything because it's not. It's just not. You can, I, I ring, I ring um, counselling places and just talk. You can do that. There's all these things you can do. There's so many things you can do. And my advice is to do them. Walk. Get out in the sunshine like this. Sit, talk to God. Cry. Sit in the park and cry. Do whatever you have to do to escape the person who has had a change of heart on you is not treating you right and if you do that that's going to give you an opportunity to heal to be the best to heal and come back and understand and learn and be the best that you can be wherever life leads you from there just don't give in I've seen people suicide and hurt themselves and all to in some way to get attention but they were seek, seeking attention from the wrong person and it just didn't pay off in the end it just didn't pay off so learn learn and learn forgive just as Christ forgave us, so also must we do. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now.